Hello everyone and welcome to this very quick video tutorial in which we're going to be taking a look at the multiple choice questions from an AQA A-level law paper from June 2019. So I've switched my screen over then to the AQA A-level law paper one from June 2019 and this is a two hour paper and you can see that there are numerous questions on the paper and the maximum mark is 100 but in this video tutorial today we're only going to be taking a look at the first few questions that are on the paper the multiple choice options multiple choice questions on the AQA paper are worth one mark and you must select just one option out of the four options provided for you it's really important that you read your questions carefully to make sure that you're selecting the option that is correct so if we take a look at these questions then number one says which one of the following statements about mens rea is false so again, just to emphasise that you really need to read your questions carefully because this is asking you which of these four statements is false, i.e. not true. Um, and you want to read that carefully so that you're not selecting an answer that is true. So the options are A, direct intention requires the defendant to aim to cause a consequence. B, mens rea is the mental element of an offence. C, mens rea must be proven in all criminal cases, or D, recklessness requires the defendant to foresee the risk of a consequence. To use your knowledge of the law here to deduce which ones of these statements are incorrect. So direct intention does require the defendant to aim to cause a consequence. That comes from Mohan, so that's a true statement, so it's not that one. Mens rea is the mental element of an offence. Again, that's true. It definitely is. We think about D. Recklessness requires the defendant to foresee the risk of a consequence. That is correct. C. Mens rea must be proven in all criminal cases. That's the one that's false because crimes of strict liability don't require any mens rea at all. So the correct answer here would be C. So you would need to fill in that particular choice to get the mark on that question. Let's take a look at the next multiple choice question then. So number two is which one of the following statements about gross negligence manslaughter is true? So this time we're looking for the correct answer. So we know there's going to be some false options and there'll be one true option here that we need to find. So option A is that the defendant must commit an unlawful act against the victim. Well, hopefully you've spotted that that's false because this is requiring an unlawful act, but we're talking about gross negligence manslaughter here. So we're not looking for an unlawful act. Our next option is that the defendant must have foreseen a risk of death. Again, this is false because there's no requirement for mens rea on the part of the defendant. And that comes from the case of Adam Aiko. Our next option is that the defendant must have wanted to cause the victim serious harm. Again, that's going to be false because that's talking about mens rea and there isn't um, a mens rea requirement here in that our defendant does not need to have intended to cause serious harm. So therefore, D is the one that is true and is correct. The defendant's act or omission must create a risk of death. And if you just think back to the requirements for gross negligence manslaughter from Adam Aiko, you can check that you have selected the right one here. The requirements are that there's a duty of care, there was a breach of duty, breach caused death, and the defendant's conduct was so bad in all the circumstances as to amount, in the jury's opinion, to gross negligence manslaughter and therefore a crime. OK, let's move on to our next multiple choice option. So question number three. So this time we're being asked which one of the following statements about the golden rule within statutory interpretation is correct. First option is the golden rule allows the judge to take account of Parliament's purpose in passing the statute. Well, that's going to be incorrect because that's the purposive approach, not the golden rule. Our second option is that the golden rule directs the judge to look at the gap in the law 
in which the statute intended to cover. Again, that's going to be incorrect because that's referring to the mischief rule. C, the golden rule enables the judge to avoid an interpretation which would lead to an absurd result. That certainly sounds correct to me, but let's just double check by looking at our final option. The golden rule gives the judge no discretion as the words of the statute must be followed exactly. That's incorrect because I know that's talking about the literal rule. So I was right with what I've thought here. It is option C. The golden rule enables the judge to avoid an interpretation which would lead to an absurd result. So knowing your other rules of interpretation really help you to pick out the answer here. Let's move on to question four. So we're being asked which one statement best describes the method of distinguishing within the doctrine of judicial precedent. Options are not following a previous decision because the facts in the present case are materially different. That sounds correct to me. I'm thinking merit and merit and Balfour and Balfour. Our next option is overruling a previous decision made by the Court of Appeal. Straight away, that's incorrect because it's overruling. That's not distinguishing. That's where um, the court is saying that a previous decision was wrong and gets rid of it. So it's not that one. C, speculating what a decision would have been if the facts were different. Well, that is sort of related to distinguishing, but that's where the judge is um, making an obiter dicta statement about what a decision would be. So that's not quite accurate. Or D, stating that a legal rule in an earlier case is wrong. Again, that's not right. That's just another way of saying overruling. So our option that we need to select is A, distinguishing is not following a previous decision because the facts in the present case are materially different. The last multiple choice question on this paper, number five, and we're being asked which one of the following statements about the jurisdiction of lay magistrates is false. So again, just make sure that we're looking for the false answer here out of these four options. So our first option is that magistrates can sit on appeals in the Crown Court. Well, that's a true answer, so it's not the false answer we're looking for. That's true, they do sit on appeals in the Crown Court. Option B, magistrates can try cases within the youth court. Again, that's true, not the false answer we're looking for. They do deal with our young offenders. C, magistrates can try indictable only offences. Now that's incorrect. We know hopefully that indictable offences have to go to the Crown Court. So that looks like the false answer we're looking for, but let's double check by looking at our final option. Magistrates can try tribal either way offences. Well, that is true. They do deal with tribal either way offences that have been determined will be held in the magistrates court. So our false answer that we're looking for is C. So that's the end of the multiple choice questions. Obviously, on the AQA paper, there are other questions that you need to answer. But this short little video was just running through multiple choice questions and how you would go about answering those. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, because it really helps me to make new content to help you for your exams.